How are you? This presentation is titled Hacking Your Attitude and it's a presentation that is motivational, inspirational. This is what I've been asked from Incive. I don't know whether I'll be able to meet my objective but I do hope that it provides you with some food for thought. First of all, I'd like to thank you. Also, those that are watching this presentation via streaming and the attendees, I'm Daniel. Some of you know me with the moniker Adastra. I'm the author of the blog thehackerway.com and I've published books on Python, Python for pen testers, hacking with Python. You can find uh, these books on the website of um, the publishing house Zero Times Word. And I'm very much uh, involved in um, pen testing and in training. Good, having said this, this presentation will describe the process that all professionals need to follow when they choose a specific a career or career path. This doesn't only apply to IT as such, all areas of knowledge. When we are at that point in our lives in which we have to decide what we're going to devote our lives to, we're in the process of self-learning, self-knowledge and decision-making. Usually, uh, we're talking about critical times and during which you need to decide what you want to do for a living. And everything that that decision entails. We've all gone through this. We've all have had to, have had to decide what we want to do in life. And this is you know, undoubtedly a very important decision as it will pave the way to our future. When we are young, when we are teenagers, 15, 16, 17 year olds, first thing that comes to our mind is what uh, a field of study should I go for? What degree do you want to study? What suits my personal skills and interests best? What do I want to do in life? This is a critical time in everybody's life. We often have um, many doubts. We don't know whether our decision will be correct, will, whether what we have chosen uh, is good for us. And it's quite a critical period of everybody's life. And this is something that uh, we need to understand because the decision we'll make will mm, mark or shape our lives because depending on the career path we choose, we will have uh, one life and not another. It will shape our lives, uh, it will determine our future opportunities and life in general. In the field of IT, what we need to ask ourselves is, am I really the kind of person who needs to work in IT? Am I willing to uh, work in IT? Because this field is different to others. IT, computing, is not a traditional career. It's quite a special occupation. There are many specificities to computing, to IT. And this is something that we need to consider when we decide on a specific um, uh, course of study. And we also need to ask ourselves, the attitude that I have now, is it appropriate, yes or no? Of course, attitudes are essential as they will help us uh, do things. It will ha they will help us move on, but a good attitude is a, de a decisive factor and it can be, from my point of view, even more uh, important than the skills. An adequate mindset or attitude vis-a-vis -vis some situations can lead to either success or failure. If we don't have a good attitude when uh, facing just in different problems or situations, fortunately, it is highly likely that we fail in what we do. So attitude is of vital importance. This presentation, of course, is uh, based on my personal and professional experience. 
I'm going to talk about what I've experienced, what I've got, gone through, and it's very personal. I'm just giving my personal opinion, and of course, you can agree or not. What course of study should I follow? Well, don't choose a course of follow a study that you believe will make you rich. That's something that we're often sold when we're trying to make up our minds. Do you really want to study IT? Really? But don't study IT or no other undergraduate degrees because you believe you're going to make big bucks. No, that's not the reason behind that, no. Or you shouldn't study a, a course of study just because the job prospects are good. Nobody can guarantee that you're going to make good money. Don't choose a career because your parents are pressuring you to study that. For example, if they pressure you to study law and you don't like law, it's a matter of saying, no, this is not for me. This is not what I want. You know better than anyone else what you're good at and what you're not. Nobody knows it better than you. This is something that you shouldn't forget and that you should reflect on. You need to know what you want for your life. Don't choose a course of study you know, because of external pressures. That's the ultimate message. And don't choose a course of study because it's the market trend, because there's a great demand of professionals in this field by the market. Trends just as fashions are sometimes temporary. Nobody can guarantee that that which you have chosen uh, will last forever and will ensure a promising uh, professional future. It's very important that you enjoy the work you do, that what you've chosen is really for you, is good for you, something you um, enjoy. I've seen this in computing. There are many people that have studied computing, that have studied IT and the different areas of IT because they thought that this was a career path where there was a lot of work. It's true, this work. But if you don't love what you do, if you don't have a passion for it, it'll be hard for you to wake up in the morning and go to work to do something you don't love, you don't enjoy. This is very difficult and at the end of the day, in general, in life, most of the time we spend is time we spend working. So if you choose to do something you don't like, and you probably end up hating your career, your work, and then there will come a time in which you will realize that it was a bad decision. IT or computing is a profession that requires great effort and time. You need to be committed and constant. It's not as pretty as the, some say, as Mr. Robot and other TV shows aim to depict. Uh, IT security is cool, hacking is cool, but it requires uh, long hours, uh, much effort. You need to sacrifice things, and sacrifice is a constant in this uh, uh, occupation. This is something that needs to be borne in mind. And for what I was explaining earlier, we often forget this. We think, okay, there's a great demand for professionals. I'm sure I'll find my way in the um, labor market. Well, probably that's the case. But this, if this is a job that you don't like, that is not for you, uh, oof, uh, you'll probably end up very frustrated. You need good attitudes. You need to choose a profession, a career that you love, that motivates you, that you feel passionate about. That's key. Maybe it's not computing. Maybe it's, I don't know, music, the arts, maybe philosophy, humanities, and you're good at that. If there's, you see that it's something you do constantly and in a routine fashion and that you like, you're good at. It's true that with practice and with time activities, you know, end up tiring us. But if 
your body is tiring, but your brain wants more and you're motivated, well, probably that's your field. It can be gastronomy, it can be whatever, virtually whatever. Sing, paint, rule. Those are all part of the skills that someone can have. And if it's um, you, what motivates you, go for it. Don't be scared. Be brave. Be brave enough to pave your own way. If you choose to be a computer technician or an IT technician, you're often viewed as you can see on the slide. People like my friends think you're you're freak, always tinkering with computers. Parents believe that you're playing with a console, and society views IT experts, um, well as hackers that work in uh, IT security and that do a great amount of uh, cool things? Yes and no. W what does my boss think I do? If you uh, are not self-employed, your boss will think that you're a profit-making machine and he will want to ensure the greatest benefit for in exchange of the wage he is paying you. What I believe I do, sometimes we view ourselves as artists. What we do is something we're very passionate about. We love it. And we believe we're doing something uh, that can be interpreted as art, but what we often do is uh, extinguish fires. Sometimes we find ourselves with problems. Our customer or our company has had a problem and we need to go there to help them extinguish the fire as fast as possible, as effectively and efficiently as possible. And this is what computing is about, be it on regarding network systems, programming, IT security. It's almost always the same, so we need to bear this in mind, particularly those that are watching this via streaming and that are thinking about studying IT. How can I meet my goal? So, you've had this process of self-discovery and you decide to study a degree in IT and computing. A good starting point, of course, is training to choose a good university, get a degree. That's a good starting point. It's a new way of beginning. However, we need to consider that this is just one step in a long journey that will probably last all your life because IT is one of the, uh, the uh, very limited careers that evolve constantly. Every year we see new things, new technologies that emerge, and since technology emerges, our knowledge needs to be adapted accordingly, and our attitude as well. We need to be constantly uh, willing and open to change. There are several areas of expertise, networks, systems administration, programming, IT security, a bit of everything, really. If you really love the hacking philosophy, if that's what you're very passionate about, you'll realize because, you'll know because everything will motivate you. When you start, you love programming, you like how to, you love administrating, uh, Apache and administrator, you're motivated by everything and you're uh, trying to do it all. And that's, in my opinion, what characterizes a person that follows the hacker philosophy. Basically, this is someone that is very much motivated by technology, that's passionate about technology, and that aims to go a, a, deep, a bit further. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming and uh, there's people are interesting, are very interested and very passionate about this. Attitude or mindset, this is very important. What are the necessary ingredients to be a good professional, especially in the field of uh, computing and uh, IT security? As I said earlier, you need to feel very passionate about what you do. Second, you need to be very constant. We need to be constant in what we do. Usually things don't work out the first time. We need to insist, try, and try over and over again. And after trying 20,000 times, it will work. And that's really cool. 
and it's very motivating to see that we do something and that after great effort, well, um, our baby is born. That is a source of motivation. And of course, human beings work are um, creatures of habit, and you know this very, very well. Something as simple as waking up in the mornings to go to work or to uni. This is a habit in, the, in itself. And this becomes our routine and our bodies and our minds are adapted to these uh, routines, these habits. We do this automatically. I don't know if you realize this because since you, routine, you repeat the routines every day, you act out of muscle memory. You're not even, not even aware of the process about what you're doing. And uh, you take public transportation, maybe you walk to catch the bus, then you go to your office, you sit on your table, you turn on your computer, and this is your daily habit, your daily routine. So if uh, we have uh, a methodology to s in place to study and working, this could be something internal. Sometimes this, uh, these habits can be positive or negative, and the negative ones may be considered as addictions. Uh, habit which uh, take into its negative uh, implications, the results are not adequate. A positive uh, habit uh, may be encouraged. Uh, for instance, I'm speaking about this out of experience, my own experience. For instance, uh, in order to study or work, I always follow the same methodology. On Sundays, I decide uh, what uh, which activities I or which uh, tasks I need to carry out uh, the following week and I always do this on Sunday night and then during the week uh, I follow a methodology based on a Commodore. This is something um, that is uh, done in a short span of time. 45 minutes or so. So during these 45 minutes, I uh, uh, I focus on what I need to do uh, constantly without breaks, no distraction, nothing without looking at the Twitter or mobile phone or anything. I just uh, deal with what I, uh, I just focus on what I need to do. After these 45 minutes, I take a 15 minute rest in order to look at Twitter, Telegram, uh, take a rest, uh, drink some water stretch, uh, you know, this is what I was saying earlier about creating a habit or a habit, and this is a way, a good way to reach your target, that is to create a methodology that's positive and that uh, uh, that's uh, satisfac satisfactory. And also we need to be humble, you need to um, feel proud for what you've achieved and for what you do, but don't think you're that special because you've just learned a couple of things and there are so many things you can learn and there are many more things you don't know of, uh, so you need to be hum humble and uh, um, along the same lines, uh, be uh, nice, be open, be kind, uh, don't be arrogant uh, because I've seen this amongst uh, uh, computer experts, uh, many of them are too arrogant, uh, too pompous, and there's no reason for uh, acting like this. One needs to be open, one needs to be kind, we need to see others uh, for what they are. It's people who can uh, 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 give and uh, you can learn from, and uh, one needs to be open, kind, nice. You have to be nice to people, uh, to avoid. Uh, gossipers, charlatans, uh, people who uh, uh, talk too much, who uh, want to sell you things. And uh, very often you find people, what they will seek, what they want is to um, attract uh, talents, uh, people who are just who are out of, fresh out of university. And these people who are very good at uh, detecting talents, but they never think that this uh, talent could be uh, uh, strengthened and what they try to do is to exploit that talent in order to uh, profit uh, to use these people and this is what they do they uh, put them to work in uh, projects that are ambitious and they uh, uh, make use of the fact that these are people without experience they're young so they make money they make a profit 
uh, with their with other uh, others efforts and so you need to uh, know you need to uh, understand how, how good you are at what you do so respect yourselves uh, it's not uh, saying that you can work anywhere because you're going to gain a lot of experience that's not always the case don't be fooled um, and sometimes uh, the APs, these uh, people, you can tell who these uh, people are. They do a lot of t talking and uh, not much uh, working. And I see many people who say, I'm the leader of an elite group and uh, I'm uh, giving you the opportunity to uh, join our club, to join our group. And some people believe it, you know, so never trust them. Things must be uh, clear right from the start. If you're offered a job, uh, you need to uh, understand uh, what you're going to be doing and how good you are. And also think in terms of uh, projects because that's a way to gain experience because you're going to be interacting with uh, people who share interests with you and who normally share uh, your attitude, your uh, capabilities. If you're in a job you're not interested in, don't just stay there. Move. Uh, try and change and move. Uh, if there's something that's not motivating you, that's not uh, bringing in anything, anything interesting, you need to understand, you need to stop and take a look and think uh, if you're gaining anything from this, if you're learning, if there's something you don't like in your life, well, change it. I know uh, this is uh, more easily uh, said than done, but you need to uh, try. Um, your profession matters, but uh, it's not the only thing that we normally we computer experts think that we solve problems, we learn things, and sometimes, you know, we go too fast and, and we tend to forget uh, to develop other capabilities, other skills, our personal relations with friends, with family. And don't forget because in the end, uh, there'll come a time where all of a sudden you'll say, I know so much about this and that, but you know, this uh, friend I met, three years ago. Where is he? Where is she? I don't know. <laughs> What's become of them? So try and learn other things that may be interesting for you, not just uh, computer science, other things that may be nice, maybe learning language learning. I don't know. Learn how to dance, how to sing, or whatever. Swimming. I am a professional, and then what? And many people think that their ultimate goal, especially young people when they're at university, they think that their ultimate goal is to get a degree. And they say, that's it, I get a degree, and that's it. And now it's all work, more work, more work, and uh, finish, and that's it. I have uh, two university degrees, five masters, uh, the reason I speak, I don't know how many languages. Well, that's nice, it's great. It's, uh, uh, but, uh, if you go into, start working for a company, you must make sure that they see this, that they appreciate it, that they uh, value it. You've made a big effort and uh, you must make sure that this effort is somehow rewarded and uh, economic terms, which is what we all do in the end. We work for money. Don't accept the first uh, bad offer somebody uh, 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 presented with because of the crisis or whatever. Many a times we uh, feel we have to accept some uh, conditions that are uh, abusive, but uh, try not to uh, despair. You know, just keep looking, and in the meantime, Try and uh, keep uh, strengthening your capabilities, your skills. Just you know, keep going. You need to 
make use of what you know how to do. And uh, gaining experience is fine, but uh, people should really appreciate uh, what you do. Don't complain because there's no work. If there's no work, well, fine, let's uh, you know, try and uh, generate work. Uh, there are many activities, many things that uh, may be good for you. Uh, this goes hand in hand with entrepreneurship. If uh, if whatever you do may be of interest uh, for others, if you're in a project that's uh, innovative, you know, don't complain because there's no work. Try and look for work, try and generate, uh, try and work in projects that may be interesting, uh, innovating, and, uh, you know, go for them. You might find, uh, believe in yourself. Uh, tr uh, be confident and uh, try and survive. Uh, and um, you find a job, and now you need experience. Good. Okay, you're out of university, you have a degree, and all of a sudden you start working for a company, any company, any job. You're gaining experience, and is that what you want for life? And that's the next question you should ask yourself, because many people work for others. Uh, their whole lives, whole careers. That's a normal thing to do, I guess, and that's what just about everybody does. They work life, they have children, family, they wait for retirement, and that's it. And that's fine, that's nice, that's uh, why not? Everybody knows uh, what they want, but not everybody wants the same thing. So, therefore, it's important to have a clear future perspective and to think what it is you want for yourself. If that is what you want, then fine, great. Make sure you uh, uh, make progress, make sure you evolve, make sure you do um, those things you like doing, those things that satisfy you. And if you work for others, uh, you most of the time you're going to have uh, uh, weekends off and certain three hours uh, during uh, the week. Make sure that during that time you keep studying, you keep um, gaining skills, try and uh, learn, improve. When we work for others, we somehow uh, adapt. We adapt to the job. We do two or three activities, and that's it. And then on weekends we study, we rest, we do other things that are not necessarily related to our profession, and we become stagnated. You know, and we start uh, lagging. We start uh, because technology evolve and uh, trying to. Uh, be updated, remain updated, and catch up uh, is a, a different thing. There may come a time when you want a change. If you work for a company, maybe you say, well, I'm keep doing the same old thing, I'm sick and tired, I want to do something different. Don't worry, try, 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 you know. Uh, it's bad enough to stay in a company that you don't like and uh, where you're not uh, 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 doing your best and, uh, uh, you know, life is short and if you don't enjoy what you do, don't, you know, waste your time. If you're not happy with what you do, change, move. It's really important. And if you're not happy with your uh, job, with what you do, um, it's sad, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, you should put up with this. And if you decide to work for others, uh, you must be aware of uh, two things. You plan your time and your ability to do it is uh, essential uh, for uh, uh, achieving success. And if you don't plan your uh, time, if you don't have a proper timing, you're going to waste uh, opportunities and you're not going to focus on what you're really interested in. So uh, a good uh, planning is uh, super important, especially when you work for uh, third parties, for others, when you're not self-employed. Um, most likely. 
you'll do some things that are motivating because maybe these are projects that you've uh, chosen or but you're also going to have to do things that are not strictly related to uh, computer science so you're going to have to work with clients that generate uh, invoices things uh, which maybe you don't like but you're going to have to take care of them and have you plan your uh, timing have you you be able to you know accept that sort of tasks without difficulty without uh, being uh, so boring and uh, bummer and when I was asked to give this uh, presentation they asked me to try and inspire people I'm not telling you to follow or do what I did because uh, there are many other examples of people you can read about or study people who've uh, left uh, print a uh, trace and uh, these are the people we should uh, look uh, at and uh, these are people that have uh, made a uh, good use of their skills uh, uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus uh, Darwin uh, Galileo Galilei uh, uh, people who've uh, uh, gone through this who discovered this and that and who really um, did and who uh, evolved and uh, progressed and these things do help so I'm not trying to be an example for anybody because uh, this is uh, and in this uh, presentation uh, somebody that uh, organizers asked me to do was to give a talk uh, that would inspire young kids so they'd uh, follow your steps I'm not trying to be an example for anybody I know exactly what it is they want and I try and go for it but um, I think that everybody has to choose. Um, everybody, everybody has to choose their own thing and to know what it is they want. And that's uh, and uh, everybody has to do things uh, according to what they're interested in. You need to create your own future uh, based on your uh, uh, goals, your aspirations. Uh, now, people who uh, believe and who uh, follow the uh, star. Uh, these are people who have some uh, skills some, uh, that uh, perhaps inspire others. Pablo Gonzalez. Uh, somebody who works for Telefónica, somebody who's um, kind, nice, humble, somebody with a with his feet right on the ground, somebody who loves what he does. You can tell when talking to him because he's somebody who takes care of, um, he does uh, tests and he's uh, absolutely in love with what he does. And he comes to uh, venues, to places like these in order to share uh, their experience and uh, what they do. You can tell he loves what he do, does. David Bogan, also an expert, but in this case, an expert in radio frequency. In my opinion, David Bogan is one of the world experts in radio frequency. He is very well known here in Spain. He has very strong values. You can speak about things openly with him. And when you speak with David, he tells you stories. He tells you what he does. He's very entertaining in the way he explains things. Also in his presentation, he gets you hooked. It's amazing. And that's because he's very passionate about what he does. And he conveys this with such feelings, with such emotions, that he wants you to, he makes you want to know more and more. Lorenzo Martinez. The CEO of Securizame, someone who I admire as well. Lorenzo Martinez has fought hard, has struggled to get where he's got, and he is someone that is working hard day after day. He's extremely hard working and he has amazing skills. Among them, the fact that he is multi thread, as I like to say, he's multitasker. He is working on one task and at the same time, 
he is thinking with his mobile he's speaking with you he is solving an incident whatever he can multitask and that's an amazing skill as well not everybody is able to multitask not a everybody's able to do so many things simultaneously and he is someone that is um amazing he has built his own way he has paved his own path he has set up his own company and things are going well for him because he's working very very hard he's got the passion he's got an appropriate attitude to be able to make this happen another person who inspires me it's a girl in this case she doesn't like uh, me uh, quoting her uh, so i'm just using her moniker and she doesn't uh, participate in many events but aside from having a sound knowledge about many different fields this is someone with a very strong feeling of community. This is a girl that loves to integrate and build ties among people. He loves people working as a team, sharing knowledge, and this is something you see often. In the world of IT security, sometimes you have loners that work in silos. It's not like before. In the past, there was a real genuine community where people interacted and shared knowledge. Now we have many people working on their own. We see that people tend to compete against each other, tend to say that uh, what they do is better than what others do, and they boast. And that's what we tend to find in the world of ITs. And uh, we need to recover that old school philosophy of uh, community building, creating a team, creating those ties. And to finish off, I'd like to mention two quotes that I love. The one is part of uh, my moniker, Adastra. It's a quote by Seneca. And it's a quote that I read many years ago. And this is the life philosophy that I've always wanted to follow. Per espera ad astra. Through difficulties, uh, you will reach the stars in Latin. This is a life philosophy that has inspired me. You need to work and work, and if you work hard, uh, sky is the limit. You need to be willing to face those difficulties, willing to make an effort, and as a result of effort and sacrifice, you will reach success. It's a matter not only of skills, but of attitudes and let me also mention another quote a Chinese proverb I love studying Chinese I've been studying traditional uh, Chinese for three years and this quote says Shi shan wo nu shi shi ba wo what does this mean this means that there's nothing difficult in this world for someone that is determined if you have the adequate mindset and if you're willing and to meet your goals you will make it eventually because you've got the right attitude you've got the right mindset you've got the determination this is very interesting as well and then determination is very much valued and appreciated in chinese uh, culture uh, sacrifice and effort and um that brings my presentation to an end Thanks very much. That was all on my side. Thanks very much for those of you that have joined me, those that have followed me via streaming. Thank you. If you have any doubts or questions, you can contact me via Twitter, via Telegram. I'll be more than happy to answer.